G'day, welcome to this uh, latest chapter on something I hadn't actually expected. It was just by accident I saw this thing and certainly with a lot of the cars I've done in the past, I've sort of done them off um, parts I've had. So I bought the Cleveland in the XC in 2007 or 2008, I think it was 2007. And of course it didn't get touched till 2015. Now that's why I picked this up. Um, I missed the Galaxy and I picked up an engine, 352. It says 352 on it, that could be 390 or anything, but I'm hoping it's a 390. But if it's a 352, it doesn't matter. It's all about getting a rubbish old engine and see if we can make it go again. I do have to source a couple of parts. I've got all the service items and all this sort of stuff. It's all here. But um, I haven't got pulleys and I can probably buy those, but I can't, I don't know, manifolds. I thought about getting some block huggers, but... I can't find anything that's going to be suitable at a reasonable price. Uh, if anyone knows of anything, please let me know. And I shall gladly buy them. So, <clears throat> another thing I forgot to mention uh, in the, the past video is this. Adrian McGray gave me this, or donated this to the cause. Now, this won't go in the XA. The XA is using a standard light fitting on the roof. I have got one of these in the XD and one in the XC. Um, this one is in absolutely incredibly good condition. There's not a skerrick of pitting, and the lens, <coughs> pardon me, looks very, very good. Um, even the insides of it is, it's like new, it's as good as new. It's the best one I've got, I think. I might actually put that in one of my cars, come to think of it. I have got an idea for another project, but I'm not ready to talk about it yet, um, because I have got a sort of a, a gathering of bits and pieces. And of course, speaking of projects, the Merc that we bought, uh, the Ford one, I've got the right water pump eventually. I was going to do timing chains, get it on the road, but now decided to sell it because we found a two-door one. Charlie wanted a two-door one, and that's in fairly average condition. It's a 280 CE, so that's going to necessitate pulling the screen out, the rear screen out, and doing some rush repairs and this sort of stuff. I'm just going to do it dodgy at the moment, get it through roadworthy, get it on the road, and when Charlie gets sick of it, which will probably be in about three weeks' time, <laughs> then I'll find a way to cover it up and, and do it properly. But look, it is what it is. So it was a bit too hard to pass up because it was very, very cheap. Same with this engine here that we're about to start with. Uh, the other thing is, of course, all the service items are here for the Plymouth. All the, the VRS set and everything. I'm about to set the heads off. I hurt my back when Nathan came over with all that big haul of parts. I wasn't square with the C4 when I went to pick it up and, of course, pulled my back. Um, only muscular, not a vertebrae thing, so it's not a big deal. But it was just a good reminder to be very careful lifting stuff. And the fact that I'm getting pretty old now over and above the things I used to do when I was younger. Um, and I think that's about it. So with that being said, I hope you're enjoying. Still messy, but I've just thrown some paint up there. That I bought 20 litres of. It was originally, Susie and I chose it for the outside of the house. I wanted to change the colour of the house. And um, it's light rice, Dulux light rice. But this is half strength autumn leaves. Um, we bought it. I painted that whole side wall. This is 20 years ago or something. And then we both didn't like it, so <laughs> I ended up with a huge drum of this. And I used this garage paint. What I've got to do, I've gone to see the guy today about these hats that go along there. And when the new classrooms are built, the folders and guillotines are going back. So I can make my own stuff and lathes and all this sort of stuff. So I'm going back to what I used to do. Um, but, you know, these things that come out and go down... I've got, I've got to repaint this. I just gave it a little squirt over a... Oh, I missed a bit. Just to sort of keep it uniform looking. But I'll paint the whole fence. I'll wash it and I'll paint it. And fit those. And then I can put a workbench here. And a lot of stuff can go under the workbench and up against the fence and all this. And make it all... It doesn't like much room, but there is quite a bit of room there. Um, that motorcycle can go there. I can sort of walk around everything very easily then. Is that out of bloody focus again? This camera is rubbish. I have two, oh, my back, I hit my back, I have two of these, whoops, this was a sort of a dolly I made for my 390, the spare one I had, there's another part to it which I've got to find, and I can make a little wheelie stand, which will take 10 minutes to do, um, but if you think, I know where it is, you have another thing coming, I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to scout through this crap, oh, you know what I do need, you know what I do need, which I've just seen. Um, ooh, this transformer. 
I need that. I'll tell you why. This is a Garden Knight Transformer. What value is it? It doesn't really matter. I'll get a small power point fitted off the light circuit where those little hat lights are. Have it up there and then I'll have low voltage stuff in here so I can see what the hell I'm doing. That's actually really good. Um, and I can use, I've got a whole bunch of 12 volt dichroics in there. Not the, um, the LED ones that my brother threw away from his house because he wanted dimmable ones. So I'll light, that'll light up like a beacon. This was something I sort of put together very quickly. That was um, bolted to the back of the 390's bell housing. It had an MX transmission in it. This thing has a C6, so I can't take the bell housing off. But I can lower that and just have it as a sort of a caddy that sits underneath the gearbox or the transmission. This was designed for my full engine stand. And I'm not going to use it. These originally just sat over that thing, but I'll just take it to that. And then I'll weld them together and mount a radiator. It's just going to be easier doing it that way. And that way I can leave the full engine stand for the cleavers I've got to do. I'm a bit light on for steel at the moment. I've only got this rubbish. This is actually really thin. It's good for a project I've got to do for school. Um, I've got lots of bits of star steak, but I'm not that rough. This is for the um, engine stand for the big block. And I've got bits of desk, but I am that rough. All it has to do is hold the front from the back, if you know what I mean. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to do anything, really. Um, most of the weight and everything's going down those front legs, which are really heavy, so I might just use bits of this. It gets it out of the way anyway, but too much of that junk. And um, cleaning up is something I really enjoy doing. So, yeah, I might do something with that. I think I'll get it out of the trailer first and just see what we've got. Right, let's talk about this guy. Um, Ford FE Big Block. Now, there's a few things with this. I bought it because I don't need it. It's It was cheap. Graham found that we were on the phone for like three hours. I hate being on the phone for long, but the phone was on speaker. We were just sort of comparing notes on Facebook Marketplace and this sort of thing. Anyway, this was there. Very cheap price. I thought, oh, don't need it, but it's like all the Clevos I've had. I end up using them, so who knows? Originally, actually, in the first of the XC videos, I think it says that is 390, and I was contemplating putting a force speed behind it into an XA as a sort of mock police interceptor. But anyway, this is a 352. It says 352 there, but that doesn't mean it's a 352. It could be a 390 because they said the same thing. There's a lot of um, denominations of these. So there's your small ones and your 58s you know, um, Thunderbirds and stuff like that, I think my 332. I had one of those with a two-speed on the back. The fellow that sold this thought this was an MX, and it's not. Um, that stinks of C6 to me. Um, it's a lot more modern than an MX. An MX is the dual range one where you've got drive. You put the thing in drive and it starts off in second, so you use second and third, and there's a green dot next to that. The Cruiser Medic C4s might have done that, I'm not sure. Um, and then they modify it, so drive is first, second, and third. But anyway, this looks like a C6 to me, and I'm pretty sure it is, which means it's later than we think. Um, I don't know. That could be put in later. Whatever the case, it's good that it's got a C6. One, because people like them. They're extremely strong. They do use a lot of power to run them, though. Uh, but not just that. We've got a standard-type clapper starter motor where the MX uses the older... Uh, inertia drive one and I had a 390 and I made a good start motor out of three the audio the auto electrician had a crack at it too um, it was a bit of a pain but anyway look these were sort of there's a lot of denominations in these things there's that uh, what is it 332 352 361 or something weird numbers like that 390 427 428 and then you got your three your FT truck versions of these which have slight differences to them and you've got 361 and 391 and uh, they're, they're kind of strange but anyway you can take them out to 454 i think they can strike to my brother has a new old stock 428 crank for one of these too now 352 all right this is a later one because it's got three bolts i know the 332s had two bolts for the engine mounts um someone's been in there before it's got a roller chain in it in there 
we're missing the oil filter adapter, we're missing the fuel pump, we're missing the thermostat housing. Um, I've got a thermostat housing and a filter adapter on the way, but I don't have manifolds. These are quite good because these normally break. There's quite a few of these FE heads with these ears broken off. Um, it's not unusual. Um, but I don't have manifolds. The head casting here is C6. So C for 1960s, 6 for the 6th year. A is full size Ford, so Galaxy or whatever. Don't know what the other letter is. Um, and the other one's odd. So it's got a 66 head. And we've got a 60. Is that C0? C0 A E. I'll just put the plastic there. Um, on top we've got a little Hurley 350. What's quite good about this is it doesn't seem to have got any water ingress anywhere. So there's no corrosion in the carburetor, none in the distributor, and the oil in the transmission is nice and red. So, kick down's working. <laughs> and we'll have a bit of a peer down here and see if we can see anything. I don't know if we can. There's no corrosion in the bottom of the manifold either, which is a real plus. Now, I don't know when this last run, it was a long time ago. We don't have pulleys, we don't have an alternator bracket. Um, so we're going to have to sort of get lucky in order to make this thing run. But that's what we're going to do, we're going to make it run. I can't find my chains. I've got a whole bunch of chains for lifting engines, can't find anywhere. One thing I did find was a yoke, which I've had for years. Um, I think this was from an FMX, an FMX and C6 I think are the same. This one I think is a bit mucky though. Oh, it's not that bad. I might have to just put oil on it to sort of preserve it. Actually, I'll leave that grease on. The grease I put on it. Not oil. Um, the guy when he lifted it, this left a heck of a mess on his driveway. So, I just stuck a rag in there and a couple of bags and... Let's see if this goes in, eh? bit messy but you'd always change the it's on my angle. you'd always change the um, what do you call it the seal but if I can lift it and not spill everything everywhere that might be good beautiful oh yes cool what's the parking pool like Hang on a sec. Oh, seems to be doing all the right things. Excellent. Can you put the pedal on for me? I'm worried about this rope. It's actually quite bad. Just a moment. That might be the best thing to do. Have a look at the oil, hey? Oil tells you a lot of things about an engine, particularly if it's full of water. Engine sort of lowered into that trough. I couldn't get it in, so I've sort of, actually, I'll probably bring it up a bit. Maybe there. That's probably about right. I just have to use my foot before to loosen it. That's how we can see if anything comes out of here. Empty. It's just stock standard dirty engine oil. <laughs> Can you see my finger? Um, so I'll let that drain out. Have a look. It just looks still looks pretty good actually. The only thing I don't like about this is because it hasn't got the oil filter adapter. The orifices, the two, the one going from the oil pump into the filter and then up into the galleries, none of them were blocked off. So I'm sort of hoping, you know, nothing crawled in there. Rightio, so that looks pretty good. It's just standard dirty oil. 
which is good. There's no water in there, there's no chunks fell out of it. It's got to be a plus. Um, I'm just going to take these out and run a tap through the engine mount flanges. They're 7 16 coarse. Um, I'm going to take these mounts out. Um, 7 16 coarse thread. And I'm just going to run a tap up in there just to make sure the threads are clear. If I can get that on, I'm going to have trouble with that one. Hang on a minute. Which one is it? I think it's the forward one. Is that... Oh, cool. Good. Now I'm going to have to weld these because these were made for the stand. The running stand, and I'm not going to use it with this, so I'll just tack, I'll tack them on. But <clears throat> for the moment, I can't get it through, it might be too low at the other side. Hang on a minute. Yep, I think that might be the problem. No, it's not. Is that about right? I can't see. Um, poking through about an inch or so. That'll do it. And so that'll support the front of it, and I've just got to think of something for the back. Is that tipping over? Oh no, we're good. Well, it's got this thing sitting up in a very precarious way. Um, that's just a bit of RHS at the bottom with some casters on. Um, I used it for wheeling the 390 around. And of course that 390 had an MX gearbox so that the, that bit of framework there was bolted up to the back of it. This is risky, right? And absolutely not advisable until I can weld a um, cross base at the, either side, if you know what I mean, which I'll keep going through to hold a radiator. But the last thing I want to do is for those casters to get stuck in an expansion joint which I've got some huge ones at the back there, which have sort of separated, and breaking the extension as But it is a real risk doing it like this, but I haven't really got a choice at the moment. That should. Yeah, that's all loose. Anyway, I'm gonna untie this. But what's it like to wheel? The other one was quite easy. Yeah, it wheels nice and easily. The reason I did that, I'll tell you why I did that, because the Clevo stand, like this one, I had a cheap one off eBay. When they weld them together, I'm doing it in a jig, but when they weld it together, it moves. And so they never fit. <laughs> There's, um, this one's better than the other one. The locating dials for the bell housing there are what locates in the back of the engine. You stick the engine mount bolts in, but they never, they never sort of fit. So um, with these Clevelands, what I'm going to do, I've got to get Jason's, I've got to build that one. My other 351 in that white plastic bag down there in front of the XC, I've got to build that too. That's for the XA. Although there's no urgency with it. Um, but I want to do a wilt run on this too. Right, a couple of thoughts. That's too high. I need to bring that down two or three inches. The engines actually sit in the cars on and go like that. So, jacking a piece of wood under the, sap, under the pan. I'll take that off next weekend, cut it down, re weld it. We'll put sort of longitudinal braces between here and here just to protect the transmission um it's pretty good otherwise i'll cut them a bit shorter i'm going to use these on the stand anymore so I'll just cut those ears off and that'll sit that down a bit lower too i need a dizzy cap um that was busted anyway but now it's really busted and a rotor cap a rotor button sorry i've got coils and things um i've got an air filter i can stick in there too just to keep that nice and clean um, leads are probably alright, I don't know. But we're just going to get it running, but there's a few things we need to do at first. We need to finish that standoff. I'd like a tack, oil pressure gauge, temperature gauge, yeah. I also want to stick one of Nathan's radiators on. I'll test the radiators too. I can pressure test it then. Um, I'll put a blank over that fuel pump thing. Well, we'll take the plugs out and have a look down the cylinders. Um, but before we start it, We'll have a look down the cylinders, then we'll throw a bit of oil down the cylinders, we'll take the dizzy out, we'll run the oil pump with fresh oil, we've taken the old oil out, and an oil filter, which we don't have yet. I've got the filter but not the adapter. 
And there are a few bits I need though. I need manifolds and, you know, other bits and pieces. Even if I just borrow a set of manifolds. Um, I don't need to buy them. Unless, you know, I tried to find block huggers. I thought I'll just get some block huggers. But I'll also rig up that... I might just put a tube between those two because the transmission is not going to be working. So it shouldn't get hot. I've got some much nicer covers for these. And an oil cap. PCV is not connected. But I'm really happy with it. And if it turns out that it runs, and it runs well, I'm stoked because I sort of regret getting rid of the other one. The Cleveland pulleys fit, but they're not in line. So either power steering one or a standard one. On your, whoop, on your Clevelands, you've got power steering because that runs between the... What's that? Is it dented? Oh, no, it's just grease. The Cleveland, that runs the alternator as well. No, it doesn't. The alternator's separate. Yes, the, the water pump, power steering pump and crank pulley and the alternator is separate on a cleaver with power steering so that doesn't fit and this is a single one for non-power steer engines and that doesn't fit either although the studs fit and everything it lines up but the pulley doesn't um i did get a set of pulleys for i wonder if they'll fit oh no that's got three bolts no this is gonna fit um yeah, I've got a set of Cleveland single groove pulleys. I wondered if I could change that too, but I don't think I can. Just chopped about 20 mil out of those. And I've also welded the casters on, just on the edges. The reason being it had those little U-bolt things. And that's stopping me welding right into the corner of each of those. And the only way I can get into the corner of those is if I put them, those casters, in board a bit. And that's a loss of stability. So I've just lowered it because I didn't like the angle of the engine the way it was. So I'm just trying to get it around about how it would sit in the car, which is sort of like that. And now I can sort of mark it where I weld this RHS. It just means pulling the engine off the stand. I think what I might do, I think what I might do is just try and tack those rods in where they are well, maybe I'm going to have to take, actually, I might have to take those outriggers off. They're not level anyway. Cut those down to size. Place it back on there. Weld those in. It's just a, it's a pain because you're sort of putting the engine on and taking it off again, like 20 times. So, I might get that engine crane out. And take those little outrigger things off. And cut them down a bit. radiators that fan's knackered it's missing a what do you call it a blade but it'll give me the distance i need um in saying that though i've, I've bought a couple of parts i've got this rather special looking thing um this was missing a tool filter adapter and so i've got one here Thank you, gasket and all this sort of stuff the good thing about this too is it has it's labeled front and rear so that's brilliant because i always had a bit of trouble when i did the 390s um, so, I've got that one. There's, I've got filters of course, there's a switch coming in, or pressure switch. I might have one here, I'm pretty sure I do, but I'm not sure if it's going to be any good though. Um, anyway, there's that one. There's also a thermostat housing here from auto parts or auto surplus. Um, let me get from there. Oh, and a gasket. So there's also a thermostat coming. I don't know why I'm putting a thermostat in, but I just will. And at work they're making on the on the flatbed thing one of these, a blank for that. So I've got that. That's off. A spare one I had. I've got some other covers, some nicer covers. Um, 
distributed capital cores, rotor button connected points are coming. So there you have it. I haven't, um, it's, a, it's sort of an odd place to finish. I'm not ready to put any of these service items on this engine yet. I need to finish off the stand. Um, I did try and uh, use some of the dirty old school desk metal I've got and it just kept blowing through. It looks terrible and the rest of the welding on it looks pretty good. So <coughs> hopefully this weekend we'll get some good weather. I can mount up, all I need to do really is mount up the post for the radiator to sit on and we'll use one of Nathan's radiators, in fact one try both of them, and I'll have that so I can bolt in and be sort of kept within a channel with some rubber to sort of protect it and that sort of stuff. And then it's just a matter of waiting for bits. So I'll have the stand finished next week. I can start putting service items on, but I, I, I want to actually run the thing for a while, not to start. I might just start it the way it is, but I do actually want to run it properly and I'll need a cooling system for that. But anyway, look, at the end of the day, hope you enjoyed it. Take good care of yourselves. I can't remember my sign off. Um, take good care of yourselves. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy classic and I'll see you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.